Let's welcome our next speaker. Uh, my name is Charles Beebe, and I'm going to be talking a little bit about using Flask and AngularJS for single page apps. Um, I'm going to be showing you a proof of concept, not like a cool new startup thing, so I'll just dash those dreams right now. Um, <laughs> and a little bit of background about me. Um, I am new to the Node ecosystem. I don't think this is actually working. I turned it off. Oh. 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 oh, that's what you were talking about. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yay, nay. Oh, I had to go around. Oh, okay. But I found it. So now you have a long time to tell us all about yourself. So, can everyone hear me in the back? Maybe I don't even know. And the recording is posterity. Oh, okay. Charles, oh, make sure the thing is also on. You're going to be getting in your plug. Yeah. Is it power on? Back? Yeah, is that on? Power on. Perhaps I should switch to A instead of B. Yeah, let's try it. <coughs> Check. Check. Better? No. Okay. So, um, my background is in Python. I am new to the Node ecosystem, and Flask is easy to use and my favorite Python web framework, so I went with that. So let's get started. Um, so, I volunteered for this talk without actually having done anything. And um, <laughs> I find that to be an effective way to motivate myself. <laughs> so I used a methodology that one of my math professors taught us when we were trying to prove things, which is you write what you have, and then you write what you want, and then you find a way to get from A to B. So I knew after I sent that email that I had to give a talk about this thing, <laughs> and that I would like to have a demo app so I could show you guys at the end of the talk. And then it turns out that just getting from A to B there gave me enough slides, I hope, to fill 15 minutes. So I'm going to walk you through what I did, and then show you the app at the end. Um, so in building this, of course, I used Flask and Angular. I also used Git and Git Flow. Um, and then in terms of the tools, I used NPM and Bower and Grunt, of course. I say, of course, because it seems like what all people do in Node. Um, I used Yeoman for the first time, which is a cool tool for generating like templates of apps in Node.js. And then I used this template called Generator Angular Flask because I assumed that I was not the first person who wanted to do this, even though there's no particularly good reason to do it, because that's the internet. Um, and then I decided that I wanted to do a proof of concept just chaining these things together rather than trying to write something that was cool and compelling myself. So I remembered reading a post on Hacker News about someone who implemented 2048 in Angular. So that's what I used, NG2048. And then I also decided to use GAE because I didn't want to have to worry about deployment. What's 2048? So 2048, yes. It's like threes. You're it's more out of touch than me. Uh, is a little game where you slide around numbers and they add themselves together powers of two. Um, Play it, you won't stop. I actually recognize the powers of two because I'm an idiot, but yeah, I didn't know the game. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fair enough. Thank you. Right. Um, yes? Is there necessarily a connection between Node and Angular? No. Um, I mostly used it because when I was looking around, so this is not a chronological order of choosing my tool chain, um, I decided that I wanted to use Flask to serve this Angular app, and so it turns out that there's this template, uh, generator Angular Flask for you, so I chose things because of that. Oh, so the generator is a Node app and that's why you wanted to use Node. Exactly. Oh, okay. Um, yes. Uh, so, first, <coughs> set my repo, easy enough. Uh, next, I install my JavaScript tools, 
also very easy. Um, next up was generating the scaffold. So um, when you install this node package and then you run Yeoman, you get a nice little scaffold for a kind of looks like the results of if we were using something like build out. Um, it comes with an install script that'll build your virtual env for you, and it has like its own Python binary and all of its libraries right there, nicely sitting waiting for you. And then um, you have your index and your app, and you can actually stop here and just run your hello world to ensure that everything's working. Unfortunately, the one thing that it didn't have, which a lot of uh, node projects that I've run across do include, is like a fancy custom grunt file and some tests at least that pass, but this doesn't have any of that. Um, so next I learned how to set up and test a node app. Um, so I checked out the code for Angular 2048 and installed the tools that I need with Node, Package Manager, Bower, I had to install something about Grunt and Karma. Um, and then I ran, I built, I ran the tests, I served it, worked on my local, which was great. So now I was ready to break things. Um, so first in breaking things, I just transferred over the files from the working node project to my new scaffold. And then I changed the obvious things, like the paths. Um, the two different projects had different opinions, as does everyone on directory layout. <laughs> and uh, so I chose a winning directory layout, I installed the missing Bower packages, and then I got into the fun part, which was actually making the app work. So I just started the Flask process, and then iteratively fixed individual things that were broken. Um, then, since I had already decided ahead of time that I wanted to deploy with GAE, I looked up how to deploy a Flask app on GAE, which didn't used to be very easy, um, but between my last little hobby on GAE and this, um, Flask has become like semi-supported, which is nice. So there's a little recipe in the GAE Getting Started Guide for how to make a Flask app run. Um, so you need, obviously need to have a YAML file which sort of defines it in the way that Google wants it to be defined. And then they added a new file which allows you to import third-party libraries, which is nice and new on Python, JE, and so this is not, Yeah, or, it's, it's a problem that It's this? There. Okay. <coughs> and now I have to re-log into the guest network. Um, and then change the way the Flask app runs because, of course, GAE wants you to tell it the process to run. It doesn't want your actual Python file to run itself. And then I included some ignore statements so that I wouldn't... Uh, actually, this is a lie. I, didn't, I, mean, I figured this out. First, I uploaded my app and I was like, yay! And then GAE said, no, you have too many files for the free tier. So I had to add some of the source files for Node, I guess, when you install packages in Node, you get most of the internet. Um, <laughs> and that was a problem. Uh, and then next, I created a project in the console and added that to my app YAML file and then updated the project. Uh, if any of you have never deployed before on GAD, I recommend at least trying it. It's actually, once you get your tool chain set up, it's really quite easy. So like, there's one command to deploy. Um, you could also alternatively, even though I haven't done this, um, they support like authenticating against GitHub. And then whenever you push the master, that gets checked out, etc., etc. Um, so that's the end, and I'm going to show you the app now. But if you want to interrupt me with questions while I re-log into the internet, Did you find that you really liked using Git Flow? 
haven't heard much about it. Before. Yes, so uh, I use Gitflow at work, and I like it because I used to use Mercurial, and I find Git confusing. And Gitflow does <coughs> a lot of the administrative steps, like merging, and correctly merging, like one branch into another, and then trimming it. And uh, it's just easier for me to have a workflow that's consistent by using this tool. So it has some verbs like um, you can start and finish features, hot fixes, releases. Um, so is that are you not making commits explicitly? If you're using you still use commits. So like you would still, as you're working regularly, get commit. Okay. But then when you're ready to do something that involves like housekeeping work, like I'm done with my feature branch, I want to merge it into develop. You just tell it get flow feature finish name of feature and then it does the merging and automatically generates a commit message about having done the merge. If there's conflicts, you still have to fix them yourself, but uh, it's just nice. It speeds up that part of the process. So, drag my browser over. So, for those of you who are new to 2048, hopefully this has captured the cursor now. Ooh. So, um, when you move up, down, left, right, tiles slide as far as they can and compose with each other if they are only one step separate from each other. So twos combine to become four, et cetera. So, that's it. Any more questions before we move on? So the front end is is the front end is doing the dynamic updates, and the the numbers and the merging itself is being calculated by the Flask backend. Nope. Or it's all what's an Flask, What's Flask doing? Then? Serving up index HTML. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. <laughs> using S3 bucket. Uh, it's also making it easy to deploy a node app on GAE. Okay. But, okay. Yeah. I see. I haven't used GAE for like couple years now, and I left because it was really painful uh, when uh, they were forcing to use their own WSG, like framework to tie in. Web app or web op? Or yeah, web, uh, I think web op. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. there's two um, now. Yeah. So I kind of moved over to Heroku and haven't looked back. Has, how, how does the new JE deployment look compared to, if, if you're familiar with the way Heroku does things now? I am not familiar with how it does things now, but having been on JE for a few years, it is much easier and actually has a CLI tool now, so that's nice and semi-modern. Um, I There's like two commands that you have to memorize, which is they give you this nice SDK for you to run an app locally with basically a sandbox copy of GE, and then the other one would be the upload command. Um, I'm sure there's more things, but I'm kind of using that. So it's very usable. And uh, also one nice thing is, of course, you can use Google Auth, and you can switch between accounts, just like you would your Gmail, which is, uh, yes. Is there, <clears throat> I don't know if you got to this, but it, is there any like code synchronization or generation between models in Angular and models if you had them in your Flask app? Um, I would have to extrapolate from what I've done, but I've actually done more like Python and Angular than this. This was just a demo with Flask. So uh, you would make a callback to your Python server, mm -hmm. um, just like you would any other time. And I guess it depends on how complicated your task is. Usually, I mean, this is pretty simple, but if you were having to like render images, right, that's when you would make a right. callback. And that's easy and straightforward. Okay. Um, I've used Grunt before, but not uh, uh, Bowser, Bauer, Bauer, and Yeoman. Can you, can you sort of <coughs> explain what, what they're for and, and, and their relationship to the other I can and try. tools? I can tell you that I had to have them <laughs> in these projects. Um, so 
I did things as needed. Um, Bauer is a package manager, kind of like Node. I'm sure there's an important distinction. Yeah, it's mostly the client side library, so like all your JavaScript components. Okay. And then it piggybacks off the fact that you're using a Git repository and it uses tags to version things. So we have just a repository that's been tagged according to their uh, versioning scheme. You can do package management of client side, any type of whatever it is that you want. Uh, CSS, JavaScript, images, whatever. That works fairly well. And so you define like a requirements file? Yep, yeah, you get a requirements bower.json and right. or now it's got a different name or something. I can't remember. <laughs> but they change every two minutes, but whatever. Um, and then Yeoman, as far as I gathered, is just a scaffold generator. Okay. It's so pretty. there was another one for Flask, but um, it was much less useful. So, and didn't include Angular, which I needed because I decided I did. So. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Next up, Danny's going to be talking about Hadoop. Um, does anybody have any more announcements to fill this nice little slot? Josh is standing up because he's wearing his shirt wearing with a dog shirt. on it. Um, okay. Uh, so I work at a startup called TrackMaven. Um, we use Django uh, Rust Framework and AngularJS and D3. Uh, we're looking to 